Dorothy and Peter Brown Jewish Community Adult Daycare Program was set up to help older adults who have memory disorders to find a place that's warm and comforting where they can participate in familiar activities and even some new activities that can help keep them stimulated and to make new friends. The Memory Club was established to help people who don't yet need the structure of daycare but are starting to have memory problems and are often very worried or even become depressed about that. So they would come to a place where they can work on their memory and learn new tips and ways of functioning and uh, really help them age in place to remain in the community. This overcomes their isolation and, and really helps them live independently. Today we're doing uh, the Brightmore Collaborative, where we've come together with Beaumont Hospital, Covenant Community Care, the Jewish Fund, Legal Aid, the Gospel Against AIDS, Comerica Park, along with our small church, City Covenant Church, here to try to do uh, a service to our community to help us become more healthy as it pertains to our body and our health. And so we're just trying to empower people through these different collaboratives. And so it's better to get the screenings, to get the checkups ahead of time. And so one of the dynamics that I think we're doing is we're changing the mindset of our community to have them think ahead and more proactive as it pertains to their health care. And I am the litigation director with Legal and Defender Association. And we represent individuals uh, who are low income and moderate income. And we assist uh, individuals with uh, legal issues that they may be having. And those legal issues include housing, consumer, public benefits, and uh, other uh, consumer issues as well. They're pretty well entrenched in the community, so we're seeing way more people come to us. Patients at our end of life are, are, are seeking our help and, and, and advice and guidance. And of course, we're, the population's aging. So when we started 19, 20 years ago, there was not nearly the demand that we have today. Today, uh, we usually have 10 or 12 new cases every week, and during the course of a year, we might serve as many as 500 people. When we saw the need to, to open a new department, which was palliative care for those patients that were not yet ready for hospice but needed a lot of pain control and symptom management nonetheless, and some advice and advocacy, so we opened the palliative care program. And we call it supportive care, and, and now it's a very strong program. In 2011, we noticed a trend that government resources to provide emergency shelter uh, were being reallocated to provide long-term housing solutions. Um, so we realigned our services to uh, assist in that effort, uh, but we found that we really needed the shelter program in order to do it well. So our belief is, is that uh, if a person is homeless, uh, the first uh, and primary intervention is to help them find housing and secure housing. Uh, and from that point, uh, we connect them to resources to help them find work, help them overcome any other barriers that they might be facing that contributed to their situation. Um, this past August, we had our inaugural 5K, 10K, and End Homelessness Now race. Um, we were able to have some of our clients join us in the morning to run or walk the race to volunteer, um, and it really was about our whole community coming together to help end homelessness. The David B. Hermelin Art Resource Center, which is a division of JVS, provides technical training for job seekers and others in the community who might be looking to upgrade their job skills. Although the economy is recovering, what we're finding is those people that have been unemployed for quite some time are getting rusty on their skills. They've been out of the workforce for quite some time and they need to upgrade those skills to make themselves more marketable. And so many of them are able to get great jobs, get back into the workforce and get back on their feet.
many of these patients have not had dental care since before the recession of 2008 and 9, and we've ended up with a situation where now they have more advanced dental problems. Because we are a full, comprehensive clinic, we can meet the needs of this very quite difficult and diverse population. I think that we make an impact in people's lives because the families with special needs, many of them have searched and searched and searched to find dental care, and they have not been able to find anyone who is willing to step up to provide care. These families have gotten hope, they have gotten care, and they have gotten the message that we don't want to see you once, we want to see you back again to continue to improve the health, the life, the quality of life, and the dignity of your son, daughter, or whomever you're taking care of. We do more than just treat teeth and gum disease. We have really been able to educate our patients on the importance of keeping up with their oral health and what this means for not only their oral health but their overall medical health and also seeing the role that that has in their confidence and their ability to pass those skills on to their children as well as have more confidence to apply for jobs and find jobs in the area because they are not self-conscious about their dental appearance anymore. With the support of the Jewish Fund, we were able to uh, expand our program and meet the needs. It's a growing need of the people in our community. Uh, the program here uh, serving people with developmental disabilities who are deaf is just one program that we've been able to reach out and expand. We've been able to build capacity, really staff capacity, to meet the growing need of people that need to be served in the community. My name is Rosemary, um, and I'm the program coordinator for the DEF program. We have 11 uh, people that we serve through the DEF program, and we make sure that they all get together and share the same cultural experiences, and it's great that we have that opportunity here. Mm -hmm.